Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at ChooseWood.com. Thank you for listening to this St. Louis on the Air podcast, supported by University College at Washington University. Offering approachable world-class education with undergraduate and graduate programs, part-time, evening, and online. University College at Washington University. Welcome to St. Louis on the Air. I'm Don Marsh. The Wee Heavies are a quartet of St. Louis-based singers who build themselves as a mostly a cappella band. Making music together since 2013, the four men draw on the Celtic tradition, but their approach to music is not what everyone might expect. They recently joined St. Louis on the Air contributor Charlie McDonald for a conversation and some live singing ahead of their upcoming appearance at the Sheldon. In South Australia I was born, heave away, haul away in South Australia, round Cape Horn, and we're bound for South Australia. Haul away, you rolling king, heave away, haul away, haul away, you'll hear me sing, and we're bound for South Australia. Now South Australia is my home, heave away, haul away. South Australia's where I'll roam And we're bound for South Australia Haul away, you rolling kings Heave away, haul away Haul away, you'll hear me sing And we're bound for South Australia The music of the Wee Heavies, who bill themselves as a mostly a cappella band influenced by the Celtic tradition. They're a quartet, they're from St. Louis, and there are very special guests today on St. Louis on the Air. Welcome, guys. Good morning. Thanks for having us. Why don't we uh, start by just going around the table, and uh, we'll just have everyone introduce themselves, and uh, tell us what your role is in the band. Peter Meredith, I guess I'm lead tenor or second tenor. I'm Jay Harkey, usually sing baritone. I'm Steve Neal, sing bass. And I'm Aaron Schiltz, and I sing high tenor. Now, let me ask you, do you have an origin story? I mean, do you have like a a Marvel (laughs) Comics superhero origin (laughs) How did you guys get together? We were bitten by radioactive bagpipes <laughs> a long time ago. And now our beards glow in the dark. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I like it. Um, no, we, we started singing together, uh, I guess, probably, well, probably closer to 10 years ago. Uh, we all met at St. Margaret of Scotland down in the Shaw neighborhood. We didn't actually start singing together as a quartet until five years ago. Uh, the One of our friends is a music director there as well, and Wrote, arranged a song for us to sing, and we all kind of looked at each other afterwards and said, This is fun. That's kind of fun. You want to do some more of that? <laughs> okay, so, so Aaron, um, what about the origin of the band name itself? <laughs> uh, well, uh, we have um, a long list of names we discarded <laughs> <laughs> that are not fit for radio. Uh, but uh, it, it's actually named after a style of Scottish beer, a wee heavy, and, and typically understated Scots. There is nothing wee about it. It is a very thick and chewy beer. It's actually, we can't stand it, but it makes a great band name. <laughs> Goes well with haggis, maybe? Yes. Hey, Civil <laughs> Life is a delicious one. Though. Civil Life does have a delicious wee heavy. <laughs> now, Jay, well, actually, I'll address this question to all of you. Um, a lot of people, I think, have preconceived notions about traditional music, Celtic music, folk music, um, they think it's very serious, very weighty. The subject matters are about social injustice, or maybe it's, it sounds like river dance. <laughs> and the audience members sit there with knitted brows while the performers execute their craft. Is that the way w- one of your concerts is <laughs> Not <at> like? All. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's definitely audience participation and uh, pretty, pretty informal. That's one of the things we like about it. Yeah, a lot of these originated uh, either as working songs uh, or songs that people sang after a hard day's work. Drinking uh, songs. Yeah. yeah we've done uh, some extensive research uh, on this, and there are really five categories uh, that most all Celtic music is about, and that's drinking, fighting and dying, working, love or women, and drinking. And um, <laughs> you really, if you combine any of the two, you typically end up with one of the other ones. So if you combine uh, drinking and love, you end up with fighting and dying more often than okay. not. Okay. <laughs> I think I follow. <laughs> um, so the first time you guys 
put your voices together. The first time you, you had that, that blend, was it kind of a crossing the Rubicon moment? Was it a watershed moment? Did you, did like a little light go off or something when you, when you heard that blend for the first time? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Satisfying. Yeah. <laughs> and then we didn't do it again for a long time. About um, another year, probably. Yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, it was actually kind of Aaron, Aaron sort of spearheaded the whole thing and said, let's, uh, let's do this thing. Let's put an acapella group together and sing Celtic music. And we were like, okay, that's weird, but okay. <laughs> we <laughs> had the same impression of Celtic music that you described earlier. <laughs> you had the same impression of me. That's also weird. true. <laughs> no, we, we, we recorded a demo on somebody's iPhone and sent it to the yeah, Festival of right. Nations. Um, thinking there's no way they're going to pick us up. And they gave us, uh, they said, yeah, we, we like what you hear. We'd love you to come and sing. And they gave us a 20-minute time slot, and we were terrified we wouldn't have enough music. But uh, we were kind of hooked from, <laughs> okay. from then on. Let's talk about I- influences. Are there certain artists, bands that lit you up when you, when you were young or sparked your interest? And I remember when I was probably about seven years old, my dad brought home a Bob Dylan record, and it was mm-hmm. an early one. And it really intrigued me. And, and that was kind of the moment where I thought, well, there is different kinds of music out there. Was, was there a particular moment like that, Steve? But, well, yeah. I mean, we have, we have a lot of influences. We, yeah. I think some of our, our biggest influences are just hearing other live musicians and playing the music that we love. We all sort of got really into Celtic music and... and we went to Scotland on sort of a on a church tour of Scotland. We heard some amazing live music there, uh, but then we started listening more actively. Um, and Jay, more than anybody else, has listened to more Celtic music than probably mm-hmm. the rest of us combined, um, and can probably talk about that a lot. But we we do everything from I mean, we've done like almost madrigal style Celtic music all the way up to like the Pogues, like punk, you know. Punk. Okay. So everything yeah. we we sort of love it all. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So which, which artist influenced you the most, Jay? Well, that's, that's a hard question. I mean, um, there are just so many. Um, Brian McNeil, certainly. Well, he's, he's a huge influence on us um, and kind of took us under his wing and, and helped us produce our second album. And, but uh, Clancy Brothers, Dubliners, you know. All... Bothy Band. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Battlefield Band, yeah. There's, <laughs> we could go on forever. Okay. So, but like like you, uh, actually, my first uh, introduction to uh, traditional music was through Dylan and Gordon Lightfoot through my dad's record collection. So, and then I was mostly a classical musician for quite a while, and then got got back into the folk. So. Funny, I grew up with li- obsessed with the Nylons, a four men a cappella group, like to the point that I wrote them letters and traveled and always wanted to be a nylon. I guess it turns out I kind of got, got to be one. <laughs> a little later on, we're going to have the We Heavy sing live in the studio, but let's hear another excerpt from one of your songs. This one is called Bold Riley. All the anchors weighed and the rags we've all said. Bold Riley, old boom Them Liverpool Judies will never forget. Bold Riley, oh, has gone away. Goodbye, my darling. Goodbye, my dear. That's what I'm talking about. What a wonderful mix of voices there. What can you tell us about that song? I think what you hear in that song is the, it's a song about uh, a guy that's gone away to, to, on a whaling vessel uh, to work. Uh, and these were 
six month trips, year long trips. I mean, and it was hard and dangerous work. And so you hear a little bit of the longing of the family left behind, and the longing of the of the main character who's alone on a boat for a long time. In in your bio on on your website, I, I notice it says mostly a cappella. Does that mean that <laughs> that you do play some instruments? We decided a long time ago that we we could do whatever we wanted. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, we do add. I I play poor. I play a poor man's guitar um, for a couple of our songs that we do regularly. Um, but we'll often have you know we have a good friend uh, John Baldwin who comes in. He plays guitar with us sometimes. Um, on the studio album, uh, Brian McNeil plays a little fiddle. He plays uh, concertina. Um, he plays something else. Uh, Mandocello yep. he plays yep. on there. So, um, yeah, if it suits us, we're going to do it. In a live show, you'll even bring in a piano occasionally. <laughs> every now Yeah, we have used the piano every now and then. But is it safe to say that the, the bulk of your performance is a cappella? Yes. Like, yeah. yeah. And I noticed one of the clips, and forgive me, I don't remember the name of, of the song, but one of the clips that I w- was watching looked like there was a lot of audience interaction going on, and mm-hmm. there was some rhythmic hand clapping and some, some laughter. And it... That was our Celtic punk piece uh, <laughs> called Sally Mecklin and, uh, by the Pogues. And I think that we, d- we haven't felt successful in a show unless it ends up seeing, feeling like you know, even at the Sheldon, it, it'll feel like it gets we're rowdy. in a pub and we want people s- screaming stuff out and yelling and clapping along and getting rowdy with us. Um, it just it's more fun that way. Yeah, we like to have fun on stage and we like our audiences to have fun with us. And it's not it's not a fun show unless we are you know communicating with the audience that way. Yeah. Well, let's have you guys sing one live in the studio. What what song are we going to hear? You think Pound a Week? Pound a Week Rise. Yeah. It's a song uh, about uh, a, a true story about uh, when the coal miners in northern England asked for a one pound a week raise. and uh, They were promised it. But it didn't come through. They Sounds didn't familiar. Get it. Yeah. That does so. sound familiar. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, the wee heavies and a pound a week. Down, down, down you go, 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 down. Come all you colliers who work down in the mines, from Scotland to South Wales, from Teesdale to Tyne. I'll sing you a song about the pound a week rise and the men who were fooled by the government's lies. And it's down you go, down below, Jack, where you never see the skies, and you're working in a dungeon for a pound a week rise. Down, down, down you go, down. Down, down you go, down, down, down you go, down, down, down you go. In 1960, a long time ago, the mine workers' leaders to Lord Robins did go, saying we work very hard every day, we risk our lives, and we ask you here and now for a pound a week rise. And it's down you go, down below, Jack. Where you never see the skies And you're working in a dungeon For a pound a week Down, down, down you go Down, down, down you go Then up spoke Lord Rollins And he made this decree He said, when the output rises With you I will agree I'll raise up all your wages I'll give to ye fair pay For I was once a miner Worked hard in my day And it's down you go, down below, Jack, where you never see the skies, and you're working in a dungeon for a pound a week, right? Down, down, down. The miners, down, they went down, home. They work hard and well, and their lungs were filled with coal dust in the bosom of hell. The output rose by 15, 18 percent and more, and when two years had passed and gone, it rose above a score. And it's down you go, down below, Jack, where you never see the skies, and you're working in a dungeon for a pound a week. Down, down, down you go, down, down, down you go. 
road, the down, miners down, they down, went down, 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 to get their down, hard down, prize. Down, down, they down, asked Lord Robbins down, for their down, pound down, a week. Down, 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 Robbins down, wouldn't down, give a pound, down, down, wouldn't down, give down, ten bob. He down, gave them six and seven, saying. Get back to your job, and it's down you go, down below, Jack, where you never see the skies, and you're working in a dungeon for a pound a week. Down, down, down you go, down, down, down you go, down, come down, all ye colliers, heed what I say, don't believe Lord Robbins when he says he'll give fair pay. He'll tell you to work hard and make the outward rise, but you get pie in the sky instead of a pound a week rise. And it's down you go, down below, Jack, where you never see the skies, and you're working in a dungeon for a pound a week. Down you go, down below, Jack, where you never see the skies, and you're working in a dungeon. For a pound a week ride Down you go, down, 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 down How about that? That's worth at least twice a pound a week. <laughs> <laughs> um, l- let's talk about your audience, uh, the, the composition of your audience. Um, are there certain age groups that... that you appeal to more more so than others or is it kind of a cross spectrum of people definitely a cross spectrum and i think it's a really for me it's a great sign that you know kids from that are toddling to you know um definitely we have 80 and 90 year olds that are um into what we do so i I think that's a really a good sign of course we get a slightly different crowd at our festivals which are family events and then when we sing at a bar, it, it's a little different <laughs> feel, you might say. And everyone uses social media now to market themselves. What are the we heavies doing now to raise their profile? Are you doing anything different, or do you have a marketing plan or a marketing team? We have uh, a marketing maven, a one-person <laughs> uh, superhero uh, department. Uh, Jay's wife, Jen, actually does uh, the, the lion's share of our marketing for us. Uh, we have a Facebook page that she manages as well as uh, Twitter and Instagram. Um, and she is really terrific about mm-hmm. keeping track of trends in social media and making sure that uh, we don't get lazy and forget about <laughs> keeping in touch with our fans. And, and I know you're on SoundCloud. You have your website, which is weheavies.com. That's right. And I, I've seen your videos on YouTube. And what about the physical product? Some people still like physical products. Um, where can people f- find your music? You have two albums out. We have two studio albums. Uh, they are both available uh, for sale on our website. Uh, we also have uh, fine-looking T-shirts. Uh, <laughs> koozies. <laughs> koozies, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, all of that's available through our website uh, and comes directly to your home or place of business. Okay. Do you do vinyl as well? As that seems to be. Not yet. <laughs> no, we're not quite that hipster. <laughs> <laughs> we took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> are, are there any plans in the works to uh, have a vinyl edition of your music out that's there? A cool or? idea. That is a cool it, idea. It could be like tartan printed. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> The new Missouri Tartan. Yeah. The, tw- the 12 yeah. by 12 format works really well for graphics, so mm-hmm. something, something to consider. You sold us. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have a concert booked for early June at, at a venue that's known for featuring some of the most eclectic, most diverse musical talent around, the Sheldon Concert Hall. Have you guys ever played the Sheldon before? We did. Uh, we we've sung there a couple of different occasions, uh, usually as part of other people's uh, shows. Um, until I guess last March, we mm-hmm. sang one of their coffee concerts on a on a Saturday morning and drew about I don't know five hundred six hundred people. Um, no one was as surprised as we were, um, <laughs> but we <laughs> just had a great time and we got to talking with them afterwards and said, you know, could we come back for you know an evening show? It's something we've always wanted to do, and they said absolutely. So there's just no better place to sing. Uh, boy, that's the that's the truth. So June fifth, uh, we will be singing in the evening. It's a Tuesday evening, but uh, we look forward to just having a really terrific time. 
Okay, and tickets are available at the box office and Metrotix. Uh, you can get there through uh, the Sheldon's website or go to metrotix.com. They Very are twelve dollars a piece, and it's uh, it's really a show. Um, you know, we we don't bill ourselves as any particular. You know, we're not. A, it's not a kids show. We're not a family show, but it's generally somewhere between PG and PG thirteen. It's it's a good time, but it's it's pretty family appropriate. Okay. Do, do you have a, a plan for for the future of the band? Is is there an, an overarching type of, of scheme that you guys have have in mind, or what's world, what's world the domination future? Is what we're, <laughs> really, what we're going for through Celtic music. That's 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 plan anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we we want to be ten thousand heirs uh, someday. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, uh, we we always said that uh, the band needs to you know pay for itself. We all have families, and so we we can't afford to sink a lot of money. Uh, personally into it but so far we've been fortunate enough that our fans have supported us and um you know we get to do what we love so um you know in the the long term we're going to sing uh we got uh, hired next uh march to sing in uh, the north texas irish festival down in dallas uh for three days that's going to be great fun um and we'd love to get back to to scotland we've got some great friends mm-hmm. in the music community over there that we we owe a visit to so before we get to that we'd be curious to hear a little more about each of your lives beyond the We Heavies. Oh. Um, how do you balance the music with the rest of the things you're involved with? Aaron. Yeah, it's a, it's a constant challenge um, coordinating the schedules of four families. Um, mm. I've got two kids and work full time. Um, my wife works as well. Um, but this is such a fun activity for uh, the kids we call the the well they're, they're really the wee ones um, and our wives uh, that we affectionately call the wee hotties um, who <laughs> help keep us organized and get to places on time but um, we sort of make it work Steve yeah so I in addition to my uh, my duties as as one of the wee heavies um, I teach uh, music out at Villa Duchenne and Oak Hill School out in Frontenac and then uh, I make the rest of my living doing music full time. I have a lot of freelance gigs uh, all over the area and uh, playing piano and singing and music directing. And so it's busy. But Excellent. Fun. Yeah. Jay? Uh, I'm also a teacher. I teach at Ursuline Academy here in St. Louis and uh, in Oakland. And then uh, sing with a few groups St. Louis Chamber Chorus, uh, Pro Arte St. Louis. Uh, but besides the teaching and the heavies and, and uh, liturgical music that that keeps me busy. Our producer Mary Edwards recognized you from <laughs> the St. Louis Chamber Chorus, by the way. Yeah, it's... I don't remember where she ran into <laughs> you, but she said, "Ah, he's in two ensembles." Yep, yeah. It's the a rare beard, occasion. Hard to forget. <laughs> <laughs> it's rare that we go somewhere that someone doesn't know Jay. <laughs> That's true. And Peter. Uh, well, I've got a pretty demanding schedule actually with my career. I'm a state rep uh, for South St. Louis City. Um, I'm very lucky that my wife uh, it tolerates uh, not just that, but but this as sort of the the fun thing that we do that takes up a lot of time too, um, away from our two little girls. Uh, but it is always a challenging balance. Uh, I think that my schedule might be one of the more complicated ones that gets in the way of some of our gigs, but uh, uh, so worth it. This this really feeds my soul so that I can continue doing the rest of my career. I think. Okay, and you want to do one more song for us. Jay, Peter, Steve, Aaron, is there anything else you'd like to add? Come check us out live. Whatever you think about traditional music, we're turning it upside down. (laughs) Come and see us. You will not not have a good time. It's going to be amazing. Yeah, I think uh, think we're going to sing one more for you here. Uh, My favorite performance is... uh, um, that uh, on our, you call it a church tour. I, I prefer to call it our first world tour. Um, but we uh, we got the opportunity to sing this song on the top deck of a ferry in the North Sea in June in a driving sleet storm. So, like uh, Steve said, you know we um, we do whatever we kind of feel like, and a lot of these uh, uh, songs were passed down uh, even after the written word was created. A lot of people couldn't didn't know how to read or write, so these were passed down via oral tradition. Uh, so we get, figure that gives us license to, to sing whatever we hear. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to sing our version of Shenandoah. <clears throat> oh, Shenandoah, I long to see you. Oh. 
That's the sound of the Wee Heavies singing in studio and talking with St. Louis on the Air contributor Charlie McDonald. The quartet will perform on Tuesday evening, June 5th at the Sheldon. Archived versions of past St. Louis on the Air programs are available for download or podcast at stlpublicradio.org. St. Louis on the Air is produced by Alex Hoyer, Evie Hemphill, and Laura Hamden, with production assistance from Aaron Dore, Charlie McDonald, and Caitlin Lally. The executive producer is Mary Edwards. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, 90.7 KWMU. Thank you for listening. I'm Don Marsh. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com.